the AI coding agent from OpenAI has been rising in popularity recently. Codex CLI does everything cloud code does, but here's the thing, it can run agents in the cloud, which means you can literally assign coding tasks from your phone and wake up to completed pull requests. But that's just scratching the surface. There are a lot more features hidden inside Codex, and that's what this video is about. A complete tutorial, so by the time this ends, you'll know about all the features and exactly how to use them. Even if you're non-technical, I've got you covered. I'm going to show you a method that lets anyone master this tool. But making these videos isn't cheap, so before we dive in, here's a word from our sponsor. Outskill, the world's first AI-focused education platform designed to help you master the most valuable skill of the decade. This weekend, Outskill is hosting a free two-day AI mastermind workshop running Saturday and Sunday from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Normally priced at $395, this training is being offered at no cost for our audience as part of a special pre-Halloween event. Across the two days, you'll get hands-on training from practitioners at Microsoft and NVIDIA, covering practical use cases like 10-plus AI-powered tools, automating workflows with AI agents, using AI in Excel sheets, and presentations, and more, all designed to help you apply AI immediately in your work or business. You'll also get access to OutSkills Learning Dashboard to connect with like-minded builders, plus exclusive bonuses valued at over $5,000 including Speak to Influence, Webflow Mastery, Growth Hacking, and MS Excel Mastery. Seats are limited, so if you want to upskill with Outskill, click the link in the description or scan the QR code and grab your spot today. This is the absolute beginner section of the video. If you're experienced, feel free to skip ahead to the sub-agent section where I demonstrate using Codex both locally and in the cloud with different sub-agents. For newcomers, I strongly recommend watching this entire chapter on Codex Fundamentals. The installation site link is in the description below. You'll find the install command there. Simply copy it and open your terminal. Paste the command to install Codex system-wide. Since I already have it installed, I'll skip this step. Once installation completes, type Codex to open your CLI where you'll begin assigning tasks. Before we proceed, here are some essential points. Typing a forward slash displays your available options. Let me highlight the important ones. Ones. The model option shows all available models. Currently, I'm using GPT-5 Codex Low. Several coding models are available, with GPT-5 Codex High being the most powerful option for optimal performance. Pricing connects directly to your account tier. Free accounts don't include credits. The Plus plan provides a reasonable message allowance within 5-hour windows, while the Pro plan at $200 offers substantially more capacity. Choose based on your needs, keeping in mind that GPT-5 Codex High consumes messages faster faster than the low version. For standard tasks, low works perfectly well. The approval setting controls Codex's access permissions. For uninterrupted code writing where the agent works autonomously in the background, select full access. This eliminates permission prompts and maintains continuous workflow. The compact feature, also available in Claude Code, helps manage your context window. When it fills up, activating compact automatically reduces it. Since we're just starting, we have 100% context available. Codex also provides more context than Claude code since the GPT-5 models have a context window of 274k tokens instead of 200k tokens. Simply use Compact whenever you run low. Similar to Claude code, Codex includes task lists that organize your work systematically. Each Codex run provides a summary after the implementation. When I exit Codex, it displays token usage details and confirms that I can resume the session later with this command. The Codex help command contains mostly technical information. One key feature Feature is the dangerously bypass approvals and sandbox flag, which removes all approval requirements and disables sandbox mode. This mirrors Claude's dangerously skip permissions flag and can be applied to Codex similarly. For a visual editing experience where your written files appear immediately, or if you prefer a cleaner interface than the terminal provides, install the Codex extension. Navigate to your Extensions tab, search for Codex, and install the extension. I already have it installed and find it offers excellent usability compared to other open source alternatives. The interface shows different modes at the bottom. Agent with full access is available, and you can switch to plan mode to outline tasks before implementation. Model selection options appear here as well, along with settings for agent deployment locations, which we will explore later. The settings menu contains codex settings and MCP settings. This file is where you'll add MCP servers most easily. 
Adding MCPs here follows a different format than Claude code and cursor. Rather than learning another configuration method, let's have AI handle it for us. I'll show you how to create a custom agent specialized in codex configuration and troubleshooting. This agent won't just add MCPs but will assist with any codex related challenges. Since codex is open source with all code available on GitHub, you could clone and modify it yourself. Instead, we'll navigate to the repository link but replace GitHub with git ingest in the URL. This site converts entire repositories into model readable text. The challenge here is size. This repo consists of 760k tokens, while most LLMs handle only 200k to 274k tokens maximum. To solve this, switch the filter to include mode and select only MD files. This reduces the token count to approximately 50k. Copy this text and paste it into your preferred chatbot. I'm using Claude Desktop, but ChatGPT works equally well. With this context, provided, I can easily ask about adding MCP servers. It presents two methods, adding them through CLI commands or modifying the config file directly in cursor using a specific format. When you find an MCP server like Context7 MCP, which provides current documentation for coding tasks, simply copy it, return to Claude, and request the configuration. Ask specifically for the config.toml format, and it will generate the proper configuration based on the previous context. Copy that configuration return to cursor and add it to your settings. Now when you launch Codex from your terminal and check the MCP section, you'll see your server successfully added. Another essential feature when working on projects or folders with Codex is initializing your agents.md file. Initialize it using the init slash command. This prompts Codex to generate an agents.md file. If your repository already contains content, like this Next.js app here, Codex automatically populates the agents.md with specific information about your folder structure. This documentation ensures that future Codex sessions understand the project context and appropriate behavior patterns. Our agents Agents.md has been created. Opening it in cursor reveals our project structure, build and test instructions, coding style preferences, and testing guidelines. You can add custom instructions here for your agent to follow while working in this repository. These could be coding preferences or any other contextual guidelines. For instance, if you want the agent to exclusively use Shad CN components rather than building custom ones, include that here. Any project specific instructions that enhance the agent's understanding belong in the agent's .md file. Since Codex is an AI coding agent, you can apply context engineering principles to create specialized agents for specific domains. In my files, I maintain three different agent.md files, each with distinct specializations, content marketing, Django backend development, and UI UX design. Claude code offers slash commands that inject markdown files into its context for specialized behavior. While Codex doesn't have this feature yet, you can reference files directly and instruct Codex to assume that particular particular role. Here it confirms it's operating in the content marketer role, ready for specialized prompting. You can maintain multiple specialized agents in an agents folder for any purpose. The repository linked in the description contains numerous AI agent templates originally created for Claude Code, but fully compatible with Codex. Additionally, you can provide these templates to ChatGPT or Claude to generate custom agents tailored to your specific use cases. For coding projects, rather than using individual small agents, I recommend the BMAD method. This comprehensive framework for agent-driven development starts with your PRD and breaks it into stories, which are high-level tasks for your agent to complete. Everything is planned systematically rather than improvised. The dev agent within the BMAD method completes tasks sequentially, followed by QA agent testing to virtually eliminate hallucination risks. Currently, you implement the BMAD method through app commands since Codex doesn't yet support other prompt injection methods. We also have a full tutorial on the BMAD method, so if you're interested, make sure to go check that out. Remember the option to execute agents locally or in the cloud? You can now run them in the cloud as well. This GitHub repository interface allows you to list multiple repositories for background agent execution. To set this up, click the Codex option in your ChatGPT app sidebar. First-time users will need to initialize an environment and connect GitHub to Codex. I've already connected my repository, but you can manage and add multiple environments. Currently, we have a task implementing dark mode and light mode functionality. 
This Next.js app with Shad CN blocks demonstrates cloud agent collaboration with GitHub. These agents can code autonomously while you handle other tasks or even while you sleep. Everything is also accessible from mobile, which I'll demonstrate shortly. In the repositories pull request section, you'll see one closed PR that added the theme toggle with persistent dark and light modes. I haven't pulled it to the live demo yet, which is why it's not visible there. We've successfully implemented the dark mode and light mode toggle. This setup enables you to implement any feature, fix any bug, or make any modification you need. The remarkable aspect is complete mobile accessibility. Using the ChatGPT app on my phone, I can open a new task and request something like creating a settings page that opens when clicking the settings icon. Simply starting the task automatically creates a new branch and implements the feature. This portability represents a significant advantage of cloud agents. For parallel development, create a new branch whenever needed. If I want to implement a complete redesign, I create a new design design system branch from main. Returning to Codex, I can start a new task and switch branches so Codex operates within that specific branch. Since we've assigned the functional settings page task, we can monitor exactly what Codex is implementing. Once the task completes, we receive a notification. Opening it shows that Codex worked for approximately three minutes, provided a comprehensive summary of its actions, and included a preview of the implemented settings page. At this point, we can either request modifications or push directly to our GitHub repository. Clicking push creates a pull request. After that's complete, returning to the GitHub repo's pull request section reveals our settings page pull request with its summary. From here, we can proceed to merge the pull request. I asked Codex to pull the latest changes from the main branch. After completing that task, the settings page was successfully updated. Now we have our functional settings page displayed here. While it doesn't contain specific elements from the sidebar, since this is a templated app, Codex successfully populated it with relevant fields and settings. It even integrated the dark mode and light mode toggle functionality into this page as well. That brings us to the end of this video. If you'd like to support the channel and help us keep making videos like this, you can do so by using the super thanks button below. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.